If you want to continue publishing your face off and just spam it out content for the sake of content, I can't help you. But if you want to use your content to bring your readers down a path and to make a buying decision, then this video is for you. Make sure you stay to the very end of this video because tip number three is one that always gets overlooked, but it's absolutely essential if you want to have followers, be an expert in your industry, and have people dying to be part of your team. Let me know in the comments below, have you ever done a video or posted a post and had crickets on it? I mean, like literally there were no comments on it and you wondered if anybody was even paying attention. I have. When you're in network marketing, if people don't know you're in business, then you're not in business. And when you're using social media to build your business, you're relying on organic traffic. You're relying on people sharing your content, being excited about your con content, commenting on your content so that Facebook shares it out with more people. If you want more tips on how to create content that Facebook is going to want to share with more people, click on that link down below and join our next social media blitz where you're going to learn how to post with intention and create messages that get people listening and paying attention. Also, if you're new to this channel, make sure that you like and subscribe because I put out new content every single week that shows you how to drive organic traffic to your offers and to your network marketing opportunities. The way that Facebook works is that when you post something, it shares that out with a handful of people that normally engage with your content. If nobody likes it, then they vent that content. They don't show it to anybody else. If people like your content, if they share your content, if they find it valuable, if they save your content, if they comment on your content, if they like your content, Facebook goes ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. People like this. And they share it to more people, like the people that originally commented on it and liked it. When those people comment on like it, Facebook shares it out again. Facebook is a business. They want to keep people on their platform as long as possible. So if you're creating content that people think is entertaining and valuable and is worthwhile, Facebook is going to continue to promote your stuff. If you're creating content that nobody cares about, that's forgettable, that isn't interesting, Facebook isn't going to share it with anybody because Facebook wants people to stay on Facebook. So how do you know what's going to be interesting to your followers and to your audience? Think back to why you got started in network marketing. What was the problem that you were dealing with? There was a pain point in your life. And at a certain point, that pain got so bad that you were looking for a solution. And the answer to that solution was your network marketing. Whether you got into it because you started using the products, or if you got into it because owning a business was the right solution for you. When I got started in network marketing, we were broke. My husband's business had gone down substantially. And in order to make ends meet, I was teaching piano out of my home. And on the weekends after the kids' soccer games, we were collecting bottles on the field in order to buy milk and bread and keep gas in the car. My life stunk. I was not actively looking for network marketing at the time, but when my friend shared it with me, I saw that glimmer of hope. I was tired of being stuck. I knew that going back and getting a nine to five job was not going to be the answer for my family. I wanted to be a mom. I wanted to be with my kids. And I knew that if I was gone at a job commuting and working all day, I was going to miss out on that time with my kids. I'd seen my friends that had had to do that and they didn't get to be with their kids. Our house was the hangout for their kids because we were always home. Now, the drawback of being always home was that we didn't have money. I needed a way to be able to have both of those things in my life. And so when a friend introduced us to somebody in network marketing and said, hey, Sarah, this might be the answer for you, my ears perked up and I was interested. And as he shared his life with me and his stories, I became hooked. Even though I hadn't known that person for very long, and I knew that it was something that was going to be of value to me, 
because he had struggled with being able to stay home while his wife had cancer. He had been a long haul truck driver and he needed a way to be able to stay at home and be with his kids and with his wife while she was dealing with health issues. And as I listened to that, I realized that even though our problems were different, the solution was the same. And network marketing would allow me to be able to stay at home and also be able to provide an income. And it sure as heck was better than relying on bottles and hoping that we were gonna collect enough bottles to be able to put that bread and milk on the table. Not only that, but it was embarrassing. My kids were embarrassed, I was embarrassed, and I hated doing it. That's where I was when I was introduced to, to the network marketing opportunity. And guess what? The person that introduced me to it didn't tell me anything about the comp plan. He didn't tell me anything about what company it was. I didn't know anything about the products. All I did was sit there at breakfast with him and listen to him share his stories about his family. So that's the first tip. Share your story. Stories sell, facts tell. As you share that story, people are gonna wanna know more. They're gonna wanna know more of that story. They're gonna wanna get to know you more. They're gonna find out that they have things in common with you. Secondly, to create engaging content is to talk about things that's gonna be interesting to your audience. I'll never forget the first time I did a video. I was scared to death, but I pushed go live and I stammered my way through it. After I'd done a couple, I got a little bit more used to not having anybody on the other end of the camera and it wasn't as daunting anymore. I kind of stopped caring. And I actually got to a point that I could listen to the videos afterwards and kind of critique them. And I was talking to a mentor of mine one day and I was like, Joe, you're not gonna believe this. I can listen to my videos and you know what's even more? I think they're kind of interesting. Well, he popped my big head really fast and stopped me in my tracks and he said, Sarah, I don't care if you think your videos are interesting. Is anybody watching them? Does anybody else care about your videos? <laughs> yeah, talk about bursting my bubble, right? But Joe was right. It's not about you. Every con piece of content that you put out should be focused on your audience. What is your audience interested in? A great way to find out is Google. Start asking Google questions. As you start to ask the questions that are niche related, Google is gonna automatically fill in the back end of what it thinks the question might be. So for example, if you start Googling essential oils, it's gonna fill in essential oils and a question. If you start writing mascara, it's gonna fill in the questions that people are asking about mascara. Now you can take those questions, you can find answers for them, and you can share it out on your page and become the expert in your industry and the go-to person that people come when they have a problem related to your niche. The second thing you can do to find interesting content that's gonna be engaging is go to your company website and look at the frequently asked questions. Those frequently asked questions are up there because people are frequently asking those questions and want to know the answer. And they're usually problem related. Remember, your network marketing company is all about solving problems and creating relationships with people. So you can go in and take some of those frequently asked questions and answer them on your profile page. As you do that, not only are you handling people's objections before they give them to you, but you're also creating content that is gonna be perceived as valuable to somebody that's dealing with those problems, which are the perfect people for your team and your opportunity. This leads us up to number three. I was driving in the car one day and I had my phone propped up on the middle console because I'm in a state that's hands-free. Anybody else? Let me know in the comments below. Anybody else in a hands-free state? So I had it on speakerphone and I had it propped up on the middle console and I was talking to my friend. Now this is a friend that likes to talk and it's really hard to get any words in edgewise. So sure enough, this day was no different than most of the other times that I talked to this friend. My friend was jabbering away. And as we were driving, I went to turn a corner and the phone fell, fell off the console and under the seat of my car. 
I sort of tried very safely. We went out on the wheel and looking up to pat underneath the seat to try to find my phone because ah, drives me nuts when my phone's under there, even though I know exactly where it is. But it had slid just far enough under the seat that I couldn't get to it. Well, I was on a time crunch that day and I had to get home to get some kids. So I didn't want to pull over and waste that time. I didn't have that time to waste. So what I did instead was I drove home and I was about 10 minutes away from home. During that entire 10 minutes, I could hear her, but I couldn't comment back. And she didn't notice at all that I was not on the phone. She was so interested in talking to me and telling me about her story and sharing everything about her life that she had no idea that I was no longer an active participant on this call. So when we got home, I fished that phone out from underneath my seat and we just continued that conversation from there. I say conversation loosely because it was very much one-sided and all about her. When you start creating content for your social media, Make sure that you don't fall into the trap of being that person that talks too much. The way to get people interacting and engaging and commenting and dying to come back to your page is by creating a dialogue. And the way, and the way to create a dialogue on your profile is to ask questions. Not only can you ask general questions, like what's the weather like where you live today, would you rather have peas or carrots for dinner? But you can also ask more niche related questions. Ask your audience what things they want to know more about. Ask your audience about the things that you're interested in and then create content based around the answers that they're giving you. As you do that, they're gonna feel like a million bucks because they're gonna know that their opinion was valuable to you and that you were interested and you cared it's going to create that relationship. They're going to love you. It's going to set you up as a rock star in their eyes. It's also going to boost your engagement because people are commenting, which means that Facebook's going to keep sharing your posts out to more and more people. So having crickets on your posts is no longer going to be a problem at all. And it's going to make you look like the expert. The more you get to know your audience, the more it positions you as an expert in their eyes because you're setting yourself up as an expert by getting to know your audience and caring about their opinions. Thanks for joining me today. Make sure if you haven't done so already that you hit like and subscribe and I'll see you soon.